Well, here we go again. We're finally at part two of the Paramore Iceberg. I want to start this video off by thanking everyone who watched part one and left comments providing some of the new entries, as well as the positivity and critique. You guys have made it possible for me to make this channel more than what I envisioned when I first made the Raya review to start this all off. It means a lot to have the opportunity to inform and entertain people on one of my biggest passions in life being music. If you haven't already seen part one, I'll leave a link to it at the top right and in the description so you can catch up. Before we dive back into the parallel, I want to clarify a mistake I made in part one when it comes to Haley's ex-husband, Chad Gilbert from Newfound Glory. From what I found out since then, he apparently cheated on his ex-wife, Sherry Dupree, with Haley back in 2007. Sherry even wrote a warning song directed at Haley called Sad, where she basically told Haley that one day Chad would do the same thing to her, leaving her alone and broken. Haley would eventually respond with Grow Up on self titled by saying, Lady, I don't want your pity, so don't feel sad for me. I got a love I would die for. Eventually, Chad would do the same to Haley, cheated on her both before and after they got married. Since Haley and Chad's divorce, Haley and Sherry have been on good terms. With all that out of the way though, it's time to dive into a brand spanking new iceberg chart to discover more about this perplexing band. Major thanks again to Pedals for something for making the chart, thumbnail, and for helping with the research and scripting process. I would also like to thank Devin over on Twitter for providing a grand list of entries for this video since I wouldn't have been able to find these on my own. As a quick heads up, some entries will be marked with an asterisk to indicate that they're rumors or allegations. After all this time, here's part two of the ultimate Paramore Iceberg. Tier 1 Fame on TikTok Throughout the last couple of years, the band has had their fair share of popularity on the app TikTok due to some of their songs blowing up on there, like All I Wanted and Still Into You. There are a lot of TikToks of people hitting the high note on All I Wanted or just them using the sound for it. For Still Into You, a producer by the name of Sho made a drill mix of the song that took off and actually bangs to be honest. My personal favorite Paramore TikTok has to be the one with the Harbin sisters jamming out to the code, but this will tie into the next entry, which is that black people love Paramore. Now, I know this entry might be a generalization, but I can vouch for it as a black person myself. This idea has mostly been pushed by the 2018 Nylon article titled Yes, Black People Love Paramore, Here's Why by Taylor Bryant. The video, Why Do Black People Love Paramore, in parentheses, plus the history of rock and roll by Madison Brown, the widespread support of the band from black fans, and of course, the Black People Love Paramore podcast, which Haley actually appeared on recently. The Nylon article goes into detail about different Twitter users tweeting out that black people love Paramore and the positive reception from these tweets, as well as the reasoning behind this statement coming from the fact that black people were the originators of rock and roll to begin with. It also brings up how black people have always loved blues, which led to our interest in emo and punk rock. Madison Brown's video covers a brief history of the band, how perception of the band has changed among black people within the last decade, the aspects of Paramore's music that resonate with the black community, and how black people created rock and roll. It's a great video that really shines light on the issues with the creation of rock and roll not being attributed to the correct parties, and how this lack of credit has led to alienation within the black community. I'll make sure to leave it in the description. Taylor and Haley have been dating since 2018. For some dumb reason, I somehow forgot to cover this in part one, but Haley and Taylor have been dating since 2018, with it being revealed publicly just last year in September. There have been rumors for a couple of years up until this point, and even cryptic posts from the two of them. Fans had a feeling this relationship was a thing since they've been close for so long and Taylor produced the entirety of Pedals for Armor. Haley wears glasses. This is a pretty straightforward entry as Haley has been seen on a few occasions wearing glasses. One funny name I've come up with is Nerdly, but we haven't really seen her wear them in recent years. I'm guessing she just wears contacts. Fan names. There have been several fan names for the band, with the most iconic being Para Horse, which started around 2007 to 2008. However, Haley dislikes this name, leading to the name Para Fam or the Para Family. This came after the announcement of Misery Business's retirement back in 2018. Another one that's apparently been used is Ankle Biters, which is a nod to their song from self-titled, but I've never seen anyone use it. 
The last one would be Woes, which kind of took off after it was coined by Issa Fey over on Twitter. Yes, I know it's technically X, but I don't really care. People within the community still use Parahors behind Haley's back, so it's basically still the go-to. We are Paramore. We are Paramore is the band's iconic chant at the beginning of their shows or certain songs. Alf. Back in 2014, when Haley and Chad were still together, they got a golden retriever slash poodle mix dog, with Haley naming him Alf after the alien from the TV show of the same name, since it was her favorite show. He was even credited as being the reason Haley was alive back when she was struggling with her severe depression. I feel like we gotta give a big thanks to the little guy. All I Wanted took 13 years to be played live. During When We Were Young 2022, the band actually played All I Wanted after 13 years. My guess for it taking so long to be played is its high notes, which could potentially strain Haley's vocals as she's gotten older. Since then, it's been played a few more times here and there at Bonnaroo 2023 and at their first LA show of their last tour, which I'll cover later. Still Into You, Pool, Dead Horse, and Figure 8 are all about Chad. The first song, Still Into You, is just about Haley still being in love with Chad after they were dating for five to six years at this point. Pool is Haley's dark love song, talking about her habit of staying in imperfect relationships. She uses the metaphor of diving into a pool to show how she's surrounded by both love and hardships in these relationships. She also mentions second chances and how she isn't giving up on this relationship due to the feelings she gets from it. Her forgetting about the bad things for a little bit of time keeps her going in this relationship. This song was released in May 2017, just two months before the announcement of her and Chad's divorce. The tone changes drastically when it comes to Dead Horse from her first solo album, Pedals for Armor, as she sings about how she stayed with him for too long, hence the analogy of beating a dead horse. She even mentions Sherry and talks about how she sang along to his shitty song since she was featured on Vicious Love from his band, newfound glory. She ends up by telling him that he got another song from her. An important detail from this song's music video is that Haley is seen filling up her wedding boots with cement. Figure 8 details Haley dealing with a toxic relationship that seems to go on forever, hence the name Figure 8. She talks about being drained dry down to her last drop and how she doesn't know how to shut this relationship down. The chorus has her admitting that the things she does are for this person's sake and how she lost her way by becoming the thing she hates. This song could be a bit of a stretch when it comes to Chad being the one she's talking about, since this song came out nearly six years after they divorced. I guess we'll never know. Meet and Greets Throughout the years, the band has held various meet and greets so fans could have opportunities to meet the members. The most notable ones were the Honda Civic Tour back in 2010, Monumentor in 2014, and Parahoy 2016. Monumentor also had a meet and greet package, which came with a Georgia Pit or premium seat, an exclusive Paramore screen print and pin pack, a commemorative meet and greet laminate. Thankfully, I have a couple of accounts from fans who were able to attend some of these meet and greets. So firstly, I'd like to introduce you to Pirate from over on the fan Discord server. Hello, I'm Pirate, and I am here to talk about the two meet and greets that I happen to have with Paramore. The first was in 2010 with their Honda Civic Tour, and in 2014 when they were co-headliners with Fall Out Boy for Monumentor. Both of them were kind of similar in the amount of time and how they were basically handled. Typically when you have a meet and greet, it's just a quick, hey, hello, you talk to this person for maybe like a minute or two, you get a picture and then you're out. But both were really special. 2010's Honda Civic Tour meet and greet was through Paramore's fan club. When you had the Paramore fan club pre-sale, you were put basically into a bucket for each date and your name was drawn to essentially be chosen for a meet and greet. But it was, it was really nice, a nice place that I, I still talked to a couple of people from my time there. So what happened was you would arrive to the venue early and you would have a special entrance that you would go to. And they basically took you into a back area and had everybody line up in a line and the band just walked down and signed everything and then you got a photo with them. Depending on which member it was, was how long, whether it be one second to maybe 30 seconds to a minute that you got to spend. 
Haley was just such a gem as well as Zach and Taylor. I, I just remember having a conversation with uh, Haley about how much impact their music had at the time. Two years previous, my dad had passed away and their music had really got me up to that point and their music still does to this day. So it was really nice to have that uh, moment to just kind of talk. It was really, really nice. And then I spoke with uh, Zach, who basically gave me my inspiration for the hats I wear now. Uh, what was uh, interesting was we talked about uh, lightning. They had flown in and Zach had taken a picture of a lightning bolt as it hit a building. It wasn't a building, it was like a lightning rod. He had gotten a picture outside of the plane. It was really interesting to, to see that. The second meet and greet was your typical meet and greet that you would buy with a VIP package. So I, I just remember talking about those four years in between and how much I had grown up to that point. And one thing that impacted me was Haley remembering that because when you're in a big, as big a band as they are, especially now how big they've gotten, you meet so many people. And the genuine look and smile that Haley gave me was something that I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. It was really just nice. They were such genuine people, and they genuinely remembered the, those of us who were in the fan club. Next up, I have an account from Tiffany over on Twitter who actually met the band at Monumentor. To start off, she stated that the group of those meeting the band showed up a bit earlier than the start of the show, where they would then line up single file to be taken into the venue. Once they were in the venue, the band had a little section with the backdrop so the fans could take photos with them. At the time, it was Haley, Taylor, and Jeremy, since this was 2014. Once Tiffany got to meet the band, she said that they were very nice as usual and cited it as one of her best memories ever. She even gave me permission to share these photos she took with the band, so here they are. Once again, I want to say thanks to these two for providing their accounts of their meet and greets and helping me out with this entry. Love Rising Back on March 20th of this year, Haley performed at the Love Rising concert in Nashville in order to advocate for LGBTQ rights at the Bridgestone Arena due to legislation targeting these groups of people in Tennessee. She performed in Ordinary from her album Flowers for Vases for the first time live with her friend and fellow artist Becca Mincare and played the guitar as well. Haley's Red Carpet Dresses Throughout the last 15 years, Haley has donned some rather stunning dresses at her rare carpet appearances with a mix of some more casual wear too. There's an entire Nylon article titled, Haley Williams, Pop Punk Style Evolution on the Red Carpet. My personal favorite out of the bunch would be her 2010 MTV EMAs appearance due to her pink hair and how she blends it with her overall pink aesthetic. The 2011 Grammy dress has always been an interesting one to me due to the pink fur just chilling at the bottom of the dress. There are some very memorable looks in here for sure for all of the older Paramore fans to reminisce on. Yelia Williams Throughout her social media career, Haley's username has always been Yelia Williams. The first part of this username is just Haley backwards, with the second part being her last name. I believe the lore for this name stems from her actual name being taken at the time, leading her to make a goofy yet iconic username. Haley's break from social media on October 8, 2021, Haley posted on her Instagram to announce her departure from her long tenure on social media that spans all the way back to MySpace, if you ever even heard of that. She explained that it was due to her wanting to keep a boundary between her public and private life, as well as wanting to spend more time looking up and out rather than down. Following this, she would go on to wipe her Instagram and completely delete her Twitter. Since then, though, she's been using her Instagram again following the band's return in 2022, yet her Twitter is still deleted. However, she recently revealed through her Instagram stories that she has a Twitter burner that she uses to check what people tweet with her name in it, showing that she's just as terminally online as the rest of us and leading fans to tweet all sorts of things in an effort to get her attention, usually with Haley Williams of Paramore to start the tweets off. During the tail end of the tour in the US, there was even speculation around the community that a user by the handle of Paramike484 was actually Haley but they've since confirmed that they're not her. It would have made for quite the funny story if she did get caught up that easily though. Celebrities for Misery Business During their past leg of touring, the band would sometimes bring celebrities on stage for Misery Business instead of a fan from the audience like they usually do. These celebrities include the famous rapper Lil Uzi Vert, another famous rapper Rico Nasty, and one of the best basketball players ever in my opinion, Stephen Curry. 
Uzi came on stage back at their Madison Square Garden show and they actually posted a video of themselves listening to Ain't It Fun back in 2016. They also credited Haley for being one of their biggest influences as well. Rico Nasty came on stage during their first night in LA and would go on to thank and show love to the band on her Instagram after 13 years of listening to them. Stephen Curry would come on stage for the Chase Center show since he plays for the team that the arena hosts being the Golden State Warriors. Haley even sang happy birthday to him at his 30th birthday party back in 2018 and he and his wife Aisha Curry also listened to the band during one of their first dates. I guess you could say he's a pretty big fan, but who could blame him? All I Wanted with Billie Eilish On the first night of their LA show from this past tour, Billie Eilish was in attendance, eventually ending up on stage to sing All I Wanted with Haley. Throughout the show, fans on Twitter were speculating what would happen, since they knew that Haley and Billie have a pretty tight relationship. I can't forget to mention the Crave Box space though, since we were all going crazy as the collective in real time watching it happen, so shout out to Isafe and Mar for hosting it, as well as everyone else who came through. This wouldn't be the first time Haley and Billy sang together though, as they sang Misery Business for Billy's Coachella 2022 set. Let's just hope the two can get in the studio together one day for a collab track. Tier 2 Rihanna slash Paramore TRL From 1998 to 2008, MTV aired a show titled Total Request Live, where viewers at home could request music videos via phone or online to be played on the hour-long program. Out of these requests, only 10 videos would be played every episode. Many musicians, actors, and celebrities would appear on the program in order to promote their newest works. On their October 9, 2007 episode, both Paramore and the pop star Rihanna would appear on the program together and take a picture together backstage. This is actually where the funny picture of Rihanna towering over Haley comes from. Unfortunately, this episode and most of the show is completely lost. The only things we have from this episode are pictures that were taken throughout it. Hopefully someone has a recording of it somewhere and just hasn't found it. If you happen to have one, it would be great if you send it to me over on Twitter so we can finally show the footage from this episode. Ticket Prices Back in late 2022 for the band's North American return tour, the resale prices for tickets on the infamous ticket selling app Ticketmaster were ridiculous, with multiple Twitter users posting some of the prices and voicing their frustrations over the situation. This was mostly an issue with the higher demand shows in big cities as some tickets were going for over $8,000. This whole situation just shines a light on how poorly managed Ticketmaster is when it comes to reselling and how absurd their fees are since they can charge however they want just because they got a chokehold on the concert market. But I suppose that'll be a topic for another day. Haley's Neck Due to her constant head banging over the last 20 years, Haley's neck has completely lost its curvature. She revealed this in 2020 with some pictures of the x-ray, which showed her loss of proper cervical lordosis. The Eckhart Chiropractic website states that this could accelerate the process of spinal degeneration since the natural curvature of the spine provides the necessary stabilization of the head and spine. Haley still head bangs at their shows, so I guess she's living a it is what it is lifestyle. Paramore is a band. Well, yeah, but there have been conflicts between Haley and others about the validity of the band actually being a band, since it seems like Haley gets the credit for everything. In some articles, they even refer to the entirety of Paramore as she, like Taylor and Zach don't even exist. In the past, she's worn a shirt with Paramore is a band, crudely written with Sharpie, reiterating how important each member of the band is. While Haley is the front woman, she knows that each member plays their own vital roles, as well as the fans. Video Game Appearances The band has had a couple of their songs end up in video games, with it all starting with Misery Business and Guitar Hero World Tour back in 2008. Haley was even in the game, rocking a riot shirt. She did all of her motion capture work too, and even had her face scanned. There's a behind the scenes video for it as well if you'd like to see the whole process. Next, Misery Business would end up in the crime simulator GTA clone Saints Row 2 as it can be played on the 89.0 Old Tour FM. For those who have played the game, all I'ma say is the milk bones and pimp slapper combo was elite. Last but not least, That's What You Get was a playable song in Rock Band 2. It's crazy that I had Guitar Hero World Tour back in the day on my brother and I's PS3 but I definitely wasn't a Paramore fan at this time, so I never knew Misery Business was even in the game. Standing Still During Say Come Sa While they were performing in Chile in early 2023, 
Haley told the crowd to stand completely still with their arms to their sides during the entirety of Say Come Sa. I think this was because of the crowding issues at shows with people getting too cramped. It only happened for two concerts and they immediately went back to dancing afterwards. The still image of Haley standing still and looking out into the crowd with her eyes wide open has become a meme within the community. Note to self. Back in April, Haley wrote a letter to her younger self teaching her that life is both slash and. It's basically a means of telling herself to learn about both sides of situations and her emotions. One thing from this letter that was pointed out by fans was her potentially questioning her sexuality with the line straight and also spectrum. The note was even made into a short video that played before the start of the band's shows during their past tour. Pedals for Armor 1 through 3 Pedals for Armor 1 through 3 were the EPs that would come together to make Haley's first solo album, Pedals for Armor, in 2020. Pedals for Armor 1 had three singles on it, which were Simmer, Leave It Alone, and Cinnamon, and it came out on February 6, 2020. Pedals for Armor 2 had Roses slash Lotus slash Violet slash Iris, Over Yet, My Friend, and Why We Ever, and it came out on April 21, 2020. Pedals for Armor 3 had Pure Love, Taken, Sugar on the Rim, Watch Me While I Bloom, and Crystal Clear. And it came out on May 7, 2020, just the day before the whole album released. This is a very interesting rollout method since it goes against the usual rollout of a single or two before the full album. Lindsay Burns Lindsay Burns is a well-known photographer that's friends with Haley and has done photo shoots with her and several other artists like the indie rock group Boy Genius with Julian Baker, Phoebe Bridgers, and Lucy Dawkins. She also has her own website where she takes work and shows off some of her best work. She's done a good amount of shoots for high-profile actresses as well, such as Scarlett Johansson. Touring Members Paramore has had a lot of touring members come and go, but the current ones are Joey Howard, who plays bass guitar and is on backing vocals, Logan McKenzie, who plays rhythm guitar and the keyboard, Joey Mullen, who plays percussion and drums, and Brian Robert Jones, who plays rhythm guitar and is on backing vocals too. Joey Howard has been around since 2016, Logan and Joey Mullen have been around since 2017, and Brian just joined in 2022. Concert Mashups one of the most interesting and exciting parts of the band's concerts are the mashups they sometimes perform. The most well-known one is the Crush 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 and Low by Flo Rida mashup that debuted back in 2008 with Haley singing the chorus of Low after singing Crush Crush Crush's Last Bridge. Other notable mashups include Heart of Glass with Hard Times, I Wanna Dance with Somebody slash Genius of Love with Rose Colored Boy, and One Arm Scissor with Here We Go Again. Everything is emo. Everything is Emo was a 20 episode podcast series hosted by Haley that focused on the history and evolution of Emo. It lasted from April 2022 to September 2022 and was published by BBC Sounds. However, all of the episodes have been oddly removed from BBC's website. Fortunately, fans have recovered the episodes and posted them all online. Tier 3 the Scrapped Ain't It Fun Music Video there happens to be a scrapped music video for Ain't It Fun that was directed by the same guy, Daniel Cloud Campos, that directed the music video for Zed's Stay the Night, which Haley was featured on. The reason for it being scrapped was due to the band disliking the direction the video was going in. Unfortunately, there's no information on the direction this video would have taken, and there's never been any footage released from it, making it a valuable piece of Paramore Lost Media. The Self-Titled Sessions the Self-Titled Sessions was a series of short videos showcasing some of the band's studio work on their self-titled album from 2013. The most popular song from the album, Ain't It Fun, was even shown being worked on. It was mostly the end of the song, where the backing vocalist and the choir come in. There were two sessions shown off, with session one focusing on Ain't It Fun and Ankle Biters, and session two showing the band playing basketball and showing off more of Ain't It Fun and Now. I just wish they posted more of these for both After Laughter and This Is Why, since it's always interesting to see the band's takes in the studio. Self-titled leak four days early. I guess I'm just on a self-titled run here, so shout out to all my self-titled writer dies out there. Whenever self-titled dropped in April 2013, it was originally supposed to drop on April 9th, but would ultimately be leaked four days earlier on the 5th, prompting its release by the band on the same day. There are actually accounts of it leaking during the last days of March 2013, so it could have been then instead of the 5th. 
All I know is that this couldn't have been a good situation for the band to be in. Tiny Desk Concert In October 2017, the band played a Tiny Desk Concert for NPR Music where they played some songs off of After Laughter, Be In Hard Times, 26, and Fake Happy. Haley, Taylor, Zach, Joey Howard, Logan McKenzie, and Taylor's older brother Justin were there for this. In December 2020, Haley had a Tiny Desk Concert at her house where she played some songs off of Pedals for Armor, being Pure Love, Taken, and Dead Horse. It was her, Aaron Steele, Joey Howard, Becca, and Julian Baker. Both concerts are nice watches for those who enjoy more laid-back shows. Haley was on MTV Cribs. Back in 2009, Haley was on MTV Cribs showcasing her house at the time. She had multiple paintings around the house, music plaques and awards, as well as collectibles such as Barbie dolls and a bobblehead of Chad. She also showed off the objects that were in the promotional slash single images for Brand New Eyes, as well as her record player with one of Michael Jackson's vinyls that she got after he passed that same year. Elkie Elkie, whose real name is Kayla Greninger, is an alt slash indie pop musician and model that's from Nashville that seems to have a good relationship with the band. She provided backing vocals on Big Man Little Dignity and even toured with the band during her 2023 South American tour. IMDB even has her listed as a cast member for the This Is Why music video, yet I couldn't find her whenever I went to look. If you see her, just let me know in the comments since I could just be blind. Sunday Sessions the Sunday Sessions are videos of Haley and Joey Howard playing acoustic versions of songs together from Pedals for Armor at Haley's house during quarantine. They played Why We Ever, Taken, and Leave It Alone with Joey on bass guitar and Haley on the keyboard. Similar to the Tiny Desk concerts, these sessions make for a more relaxed listening experience to these songs. Doll Limbs Before Flowers for Vases In a lead up to Haley's second studio album in 2021, Flowers for Vases, she sent fans doll limbs in the mail with plant me labels attached to them. Her website's URL also changed at the time to flowersforvases.com, seemingly hinting towards the name of her next project. On the website, there was a black and white animation of a cross, flowers in a vase, candles, and other objects. There was also a snippet of Haley singing the songs My Limb over and over again. My Limb would ultimately be a song on the album, tying this whole mystery up. Color Me In this song was released after Flowers for Vases and was actually recorded days before quarantine occurred the previous year. Personally, I don't know what to take away from this intriguing song since color and Haley in could mean different things. Maybe it has something to do with someone bringing her color back after years of unfortunate things happening to her, with this someone being Taylor. Reading Festival 2014 Reading Festival 2014 was a huge festival that featured multiple alt-rock bands, with Paramore being one of the headliners. However, there was a massive power outage during Paramore's show, causing a 15-minute delay. Another reason the show is iconic is due to the set list, which features songs like Pressure, Let the Flames Begin, and Part 2, as well as the acoustic version of The Only Exception. I forgot to mention that Haley also had her blue hair, which is my personal favorite hairstyle she's ever had. Teenagers Teenagers was a song made by Haley for the 2009 horror slash comedy movie Jennifer's Body. The movie involves a teenage cheerleader played by Megan Fox getting possessed, leading her to turn into a succubus that kills her male classmates. Her best friend tries to save her from this though. I've never watched the movie, but the song is dope. Rainbow Connection Rainbow Connection is a song from the Muppets Green album with the popular rock band Weezer and Haley on it. The Green album is a cover album of 12 classic Muppets songs that was released on August 23rd, 2011. Funny thing is, Weezer also has a Green album that came out of 2001 and has one of their most popular songs, Island in the Sun, on it. The combo of Weezer and Haley actually makes for a nice one on this song. Novel American Novel American was a rock band formed by Zach and Josh following their departures from the band in 2010. The members included Zach, Josh, Ryan Clark, Van Beasley, and Tyler Ward. The latter three come from the band Cecilia Dora and were friends with Josh. The band lasted from 2011 to 2014 and disbanded due to the lack of a lead singer after Van left due to the creative differences. Zach would go on to create Half Noise and Josh went on to make his solo album, Pharaoh. Taylor York Golfs 
This entry gets straight to the point since Taylor just likes to golf. In February 2022, there was a picture of him with some golfing gear as he was playing in LA. Back in March, he posted a rare tweet saying, Gonna play some golf now. Estimating several hole-in-ones. Thanks. K okay, bye. He followed this tweet up two days later saying, Update. Zero hole-in-ones. Almost exclusively double and triple bogeys. K okay, thanks. I guess he was really locked in on golf for two straight days. Over yet workout video. During quarantine, Haley made a workout video to Over Yet from Pedals for Armor. Some of the moves she does in this video are actually some of her on stage moves from her concerts, like the high knees. It may not be the most traditional workout, but it's great for dancing and just having fun. Love's not a competition, but I'm winning. Back in 2008 on BBC Radio, the band performed the cover of Love's Not a Competition, But I'm Winning by Kaiser Chiefs. I meant to cover this in part one when I talked about their cover of Drake's Passion Fruit, so my apologies. 40 Days of Riot For what will be the final entry of this tier, 40 Days of Riot was a part of the final Riot documentary showcasing the band's preparation for the tour. Unfortunately, I'm unable to show footage of it due to copyright, but in this documentary, the members all talk about what needs to be done for this show to be special since it was their last one for Riot's album cycle. Haley stated that it was the hardest show to prepare for up until this point in their careers as it would take a few days to get the ball rolling on their plans. Haley originally wanted to open the show with That's What You Get since it was one of their biggest singles at the time, however it was decided on day 3 that Born For This would be the intro song. The band was essentially living in a big camper slash bus for months, with each member reflecting on their tour experience throughout the documentary. They even went to the Mall of America in Minnesota and rode the roller coaster there. The documentary provides a very insightful look into the band's riot era and their touring regiment that I wish they would do for their other eras. It's definitely worth the watch if you haven't seen it before. Tier 4 In the Morning is about the Pharaohs' departure. Following the departure of the Pharaohs in 2010, the band took a one year break before they released any more music. The first single they released from their Singles Club EP in 2011, titled In the Morning, focused on Haley's initial struggle with their departure. On this track, Haley sings over a guitar about letting a part of herself die and go, hence the title of the song. The bridge has Haley fighting to not dig the brothers up metaphorically, and it has her admitting that they are one of the greatest parts of her life that became a memory she has to let go of. It's a touching song that sort of paid homage to the brothers at this time. Fruits Hair Lab Fruits Hair Lab is a full service salon from Haley and Brian that opened back in November 2022 in Nashville, Tennessee. The decision to make an actual salon came from the success of their hair dye brand, Good Dye Young, which I briefly covered in part one. The name comes from Fruits, which is a Japanese magazine from the late 90s that focused on Tokyo street fashion scene. Both Haley and Brian admired the magazine years before this project as it was even part of their influence for Good Die Young. Brian has always wanted to do hair since he was 12, so he took the time to work towards his dream with Haley. Thankfully, it's worked out for them. Haley's Pink Razor Tattoo During the early days of the band, Haley would rarely shave her legs on tours, leading to the other members writing, Shave Me, on her ankles. Due to this running joke, she got a pink razor tattoo with the same message sometime in 2008. The tattoo was first revealed during the band's South American tour that year, yet it has a deeper meaning than it gives off since Haley stated that it's a reminder of the touring lifestyle and constantly being on the road. Taylor's Anxiety Back in a 2022 interview with The Guardian, Taylor revealed that his anxiety and depression worsened during quarantine while also revealing that he began developing agoraphobia, which is a fear of being in a situation where escape might be difficult or that help wouldn't be available if things go wrong. I feel like quarantine did this for a lot of people since it was such an isolating and unusual time. Long Distance Call Long Distance Call is a 2006 song by the band Phoenix that Paramore has covered it in the past. From what I've gathered from the lyrics, the song is about calling to your younger self after growing up and taking their spot as an adult. It's also about feeling lost in life and figuring out what to do with yourself. In my opinion, this was a good song for the band to cover since it sort of relates to some themes presented on Brand New Eyes. The End on May 2nd, 2004, the band played their first ever concert at an event known as The End. Keep in mind that the band was still going by the name of Astrophil at the time, which I talked about in part 1. 
They happen to be the opener for the band, Copeland, with the show taking place in Nashville. Fortunately, there are no pictures, videos, or a set list from the show, at least to my knowledge. Paramore for the U.S. Army in Kuwait Back in November 2010, the band performed for the U.S. Army in Kuwait at Camp Arifan as a part of VH1's Diva Salute the Troops special. This is actually where the pictures of Haley with the gun and the army gear comes from, as well as the members being in the tank. For the show, Haley wore a dress that was inspired by Marilyn Monroe's dress that she wore during her salute for the troops in 1954. The set list only included the only exception and a cover of My Hero by Foo Fighters. Hamburg 2017 Hamburg 2017 was the first show the band performed following Haley's divorce with Chad, making this one of their most memorable and emotional shows. The standout moment would be the performance of I Caught Myself with Haley crying at the end. The show reiterated to fans how resilient the band was through all their hardships. Seven Drummers Over the band's 20 year tenure, they've had seven drummers both in studio and on tour due to various incidents and departures. It's been stated to be a painful job due to the band's sometimes intense music. In order, the drummers have been Zach Farrow, Miles McPherson, Aaron Gillespie, Josh Fries, Elon Rubin, Jason Pierce, and Hayden Scott. A great video to check out on this subject would be The Impossible Job of Paramore's Drummer by Drum Beats Online, since it goes into way more detail than I can. Singing Success Interview In 2007, Haley did an interview with Singing Success talking about her vocal abilities, technique, and her voice coach at the time, Brett Manning. Haley detailed how hard it was to vocalize when she first started singing and how she met Brett through a friend. After a few lessons with Brett, she noticed a difference in her vocalizing fairly quickly. Brett has also worked with other popular artists like Taylor Swift, Keith Urban, Luke Bryan, and Liana Lewis. Haley would switch coaches going into brand new eyes, so I guess things just didn't work out with Brett. Unheard songs listed on BMI slash ASCAP. On the BMI and ASCAP music databases, there are several registered unreleased Paramore songs. Oddly enough, all of them come from their first album, All We Know Is Fallen, so who knows if they've ever been finished or will be released from the vault one day. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks a lot for the support. To those who are new to the channel, I'm glad to have you here and hope to keep you around for more videos to come. If you're enjoying this iceberg, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more music and Paramore related content like this. I love making these types of videos, so it's always nice knowing you guys enjoy watching them. The second half of this iceberg is packed to the brim with a lot of intriguing entries, so strap in as we travel into the depths. Tier 5 Warp Tour 2006 Bible Study Back at Warp Tour 06, the band attended a 10 p.m. Bible study during one of the nights. The people in the group talked about struggling with various things such as temptation and hate in a short clip from the Warped Inside and Out Fuse TV special. Recently on Twitter, this Bible study gained some traction after Isafay tweeted a clip of it to remind those who forgot that the band started out Christian. This is honestly an interesting part of the paralore since it makes you think about how the Bible study happened at the Warp Tour of all places. Nardwar. Nardwar is a popular interviewer who is well respected within the music industry due to his long tenure and his connections. The most iconic thing about him is how he seems to know so much about every artist or group he interviews. Back at Warp Tour 07, he ended up interviewing the band, talking about them being on the cover of Billboard, their producer at the time, David Bendiff, as well as their special thanks towards Miley Cyrus's sister, Brandy, whom they went to school and church with. I've seen plenty of Narwar interviews in the past, like Uzi's and Tyler the Creators, so it's nice he and my favorite band have one too. Paramore was kicked off stage. Apparently during the show before Riot released, the band was kicked off stage. I've been unable to find any accounts or footage of this, so I don't know if this actually happened or not. Okay, while I was editing the script for this video, I was informed by Pedals that the band actually wasn't kicked off stage, but that they were evacuated off stage due to a fire alarm going off. This was during their 4th of July show in Wilton, Connecticut back in 2006. I just find it funny that events like this can be remembered so differently, altering the outcome in a more humorous way. Seven years in the making. 
Seven Years in the Making is an unreleased song that was apparently supposed to be on Brand New Eyes, but it was never recorded. The lyrics involve Haley wanting to go someplace where everyone wins since she's lost her friends that all got brand new eyes. She goes on to admit that these friends look at her differently now and that she's the only one looking back at everything. She starts the first chorus off by saying seven years ago, which up until this point in the band's career would have been when they all met in 2002, hence the title of the song. Next, she talks about how she's going to make it through even though she's tired and has more than enough room for a sad song or two. The following verse and chorus has Haley going back to her beginnings 20 years prior in which she says 20 years ago and 20 years in the making this time around. One of the standout lines on this track is, in a few years I hope to settle into the big idea that I can't live for anyone else. The end of the song starts with Haley singing about carrying bricks around her neck which stops her from keeping her head up. This could be a nod to Brick by Born Brick. The last few lines of the song has Haley reflecting on growing older and how she never thought she would look back and not regret a thing. But wait a second, this song has to be the scrap title song that Haley talked about with MTV, which also happened to be an entry in part one as well. In the interview, Haley stated that there was a lyric on the title song that focused on her losing her friends since they got brand new eyes. It's crazy to me how this entry came full circle just because the song is under a separate name online. In terms of its placement on the album, I feel as if it could have worked as the closing track instead of All I Wanted. Since it was never recorded though, we'll never be able to hear what the finished song would sound like. Kiss Off Kiss Off was a popular TV show hosted by Haley that focused on both beauty and music and it started back in 2015. In the show, Haley talks about various topics while she gets her makeup and hair done by her stylist, Brian O'Connor. Some standout moments from the show involve Haley giving viewers a tour of her LA house in episode 3 and helping the drummer of 21 Pilots, Josh Dunn, get his hair dyed pink in the last episode. There are only 6 episodes that are pretty short in length, ranging from 3 to 7 minutes. And the show lasted for just a year or two. Haley thought Parahoid 2016 would be their last show. During an interview with Billboard following Parahoid 2018's Q&A, Haley was asked about what was weighing her down during Parahoy 2016 and answered by going into detail about how they felt about losing another member and wondering if they'd ever write another record that they would like again. Haley then said she thought the band was over before she got on the cruise since it felt like it was meant to be their last show with everybody that cares the most about the band. After leaving the cruise, she realized that there was still a purpose to perform it due to the support and energy from the fans. Unlisted Haley Collabs Throughout her nearly 20 year career, Haley has appeared on a lot of songs she isn't listed on in one way or another. The list includes Keep Dreaming Upside Down by October Fall, Then Came to Kill by The Chariot, The Church Channel by Say Anything, Plea by Say Anything, Tangled Up by New Found Glory, The Few That Remain by Set Your Goals, Fox's Dream of the Log Flume by Me Without You, All Circles by Me Without You, Babe by What's Eating Gilbert, Wearing Your Ring by What's Eating Gilbert, and As You Wave by Half Noise. I find it pretty odd that she isn't listed on any of these songs. Could it be a label issue or Haley not really caring about being listed on these songs? Who knows to be honest. The band was almost fired from the label. According to Josh from his blog post in 2010, the band was nearly fired from their label after having to re-record Haley's solo demos with the band's music rather than actual studio musicians in 2004. Once the label received these re-recorded demos, they thought they were terrible and tried to fire the band. Josh then states that he and Haley were thankfully writing new songs, which were Hallelujah and Here We Go Again, with them apparently acting as leverage for the band to stay. I guess you could say the band was feeling the pressure? Thank you, thank you. However, this has never been confirmed by any of the other founding members at least from my knowledge, so it might be best to take it with a grain of salt. Gers Burns Gers Burns is a goofy song from 2012 about a meme which focused on the girl holding books from the adolescent horror series Goosebumps with the text saying, Oh my girl, Goose Burns. The woman in the photo is Maggie Goldenberger who actually found out about the meme back in 2012 while she was in the middle of a six month trip to India and the Philippines with her then girlfriend. The song parodies this meme by having the girl from the meme give the main singers hard and perm goosebumps. The song is mostly gibberish, mirroring the main aspect of the meme. 
Haley and the Swedish chef from the Muppets are featured on this track, with Haley coming in at the end saying, the bumpiest of goosebumps. This song is for sure Haley's wackiest and most unexpected feature to date. That's What You Get was originally a poem. There's a rumor that That's What You Get wasn't even written by Haley, Josh, or Taylor, but was actually written by a man by the name of Michael Benedict, who won the Western Pennsylvania Write a Song for Paramore contest in 2007 while he was in his sophomore English class. However, there's no evidence of this contest even being a thing, and Michael's name isn't credited anywhere on the album, most likely making this rumor false. Parasecrets Parasecrets was a live journal community from 2008 or before that focused on telling secrets about the band. From what I've read on it, it seemed to be a community that told secrets about the band members and even some of their family members slash friends sometimes. It was mostly just used as a means for people to dog the band online, as the person who created it even offered to delete it if Haley was upset about it. There's even an Urban Dictionary definition for it from 2009 that detailed it being updated every Sunday and how it was addictive for people to keep checking it. There appears to be a separate pair of secrets community on Tumblr from over 10 years ago, but it seemed to be more positive than the live journal community. Nowadays, both communities are now defunct, and that's probably for the best. Stop This Song is about Avril Lavigne's music. In a 2008 interview with Music Radar, Hilly spoke about the time around Avril's come up and how there were a lot of copycats, solo artists, and punk looking girls that were backed by a band that were compared to her. The guys in the band may have been afraid that Haley was going to get the same comparison, with Haley actually saying they were right due to her style at the time. In rehearsals one day, Haley was riding with them, and as soon as they started playing together, Stop This Song was the song they played. The working title for Stop This Song was actually Avril Lavigne, funny enough, and it's apparently one of the first songs they ever wrote. Following When We Were Young 2022, Haley actually wrote Avril a letter saying some nice things and thanking her for paving the way for young women like her. As I was putting the finishing touches on this script, the two finally took a picture together at this year's New York Fashion Week. I feel like this is a nice full circle moment for Haley since it shows how much she's matured as a person and a musician. Stop This Song is still a banger though, no matter what. The Kick Drum and Misguided Ghost is a magazine. In the Behind Brand New Eyes documentary, it was actually revealed that the kick drum and misguided ghost is actually Zach thumping on the magazine. What an interesting yet soft touch to this heartfelt track. The Meaning of Brighter Off of the band's first album All We Know Is Fallen, the song Brighter has a pretty sad meaning to it. The song is about Haley's friend, Lainey Killoffer, who fell overboard and sadly passed away from a boating accident in Mississippi when she was 16. On the bridge, Haley sings about Lainey running away in a metaphorical sense of her passing and about waving goodbye as Haley watches her shine bright, most likely being a metaphor for her becoming an angel or a star. In recent times, this song has become one of my favorites from the album due to its chorus, the instrumental, the backing vocals, and Haley's powerful singing. Ms. Biz Disaster 2010 I think this entry literally refers to Haley's voice crack at the end of their Ms. Biz performance at Hurricane Festival 2010. But if not, let me know what it actually refers to down below. Then Came to Kill Then Came to Kill is a 2007 metal rock song by a band named The Chariot that features Haley talking at the beginning and on back of vocals towards the end of the song. However, she isn't officially credited on this song, as I briefly mentioned some entries back. Taylor got doxxed. While I don't know the timeline of this event, Taylor was doxxed by a Russian fan account on Russia's equivalent of Facebook name, VK. They posted his full address along with a Zillow listing that had photographs of his entire house. They even matched it frame by frame to the house in the Interiors Inc. episode he was on to prove it was his. Unfortunately, or fortunately I guess, I've been unable to find any screenshots from this event, so I'm only able to provide an account of what someone else saw. Hunter Lamb in the Playing God music video Ex-member and rhythm guitar player Hunter Lamb, who left the band in 2007 after he got married, actually had a cameo in the Playing God music video. He can be seen sitting at the table with Haley and her friends before she has visions of the band members sitting with her. It's always nice to see former members show back up in one way or another. 
tier six, barely legal. Back on the band's old live journal, there was a post from a fan asking if anyone in the band ever protested some of the lyrics Haley wrote so much that they ended up not using them, to which I'm guessing Haley responded yes. She would then go on to say that there were a couple of songs that they didn't use due to the lyrics, with one of them being named Barely Legal. This is a very interesting name to say the least. The lyrics are interesting too, with this theme focusing on Haley not caring about how people felt about her decisions. I'm guessing the barely legal part comes from Haley's age at the time, but if we go by the date on the lyrics, which was February 4th, 2009, Haley would have been 20, so I don't even know if that still constitutes as barely legal. Anyways, a standout from these lyrics is, if I'm going to hell, then you're coming with me, which could also be one of the reasons this song was scrapped. Yet, I have a theory that this song was actually reworked into playing God, so hear me out real fast. Firstly, the themes in both songs are eerily similar, as they both focus on Haley fighting back against those who criticized her decisions. Secondly, the line, if I make the first move then I know you'll point the finger, kind of follows the same premise as the lines in the chorus of Playing God, which dealt with Haley bending back and breaking out the fingers that pointed at her. Lastly, the song was written over a month before the band started recording for the album, meaning they had more than enough time to rework the song into Playing God by then. However, I could be wrong since this is just a theory and the band has never confirmed this. I want y'all to let me know what y'all think about it though. Yard Sales In 2011 and 2014, the band hosted online auctions for some of the members' clothes in order to raise money for both the Red Cross in Japan following the Fukushima disaster as well as the Alice Adams Foundation. There were a lot of items auctioned off for me to even keep track of. But there were some standouts, such as Haley's purple dress that she wore back in 2006, the black and teal checkered top Haley wore at the Teen Choice Awards in 2013, the button down shirt Jeremy wore in the picture the band took with Rihanna, the Hawaiian shirt Taylor wore during Parahoy 2014, and the teddy bear used in the Ain't It Fun music video. The auction would get expensive though, with certain items going into the thousands, which makes sense given that these items were actually worn by the members. They even came with certificates of authenticity and were signed by them too. Paramore's first drum kit used to be owned by Taylor Hawkins. Back when the band first started playing shows in 2004, Zach needed a better drum kit, leading him to get one from an in-town friend. Turns out this drum set actually belonged to the late drummer for Foo Fighters, Taylor Hawkins. Haley referred to this event as them stealing a blessing from Hawkins, with Zach previously stating that Foo Fighters were one of his biggest music inspirations too. Getting this drum set honestly showed how much of a prodigy Zach was. Bedroom Intruder Cover In 2010, Haley, Jordan Pundick of New Found Glory, and Ethan Luck of Reliant K made a punk rock cover to the popular Bed Intruder meme. Haley starts the song off with one of the most memorable lines from the original video, and it's only a minute and 16 seconds long. Taylor's ex. In late 2013, Taylor got with a woman by the name of Bailey Brown. Bailey was a contestant on the hit singing contest TV show American Idol during both season 6 and 11. She sang Stronger by Faith Hill for her season 6 audition, with all three judges voting yes to send her to the next round, in which she would then be eliminated shortly after. For her season 11 audition, she sang Bed of Roses by Bon Jovi, with all three judges voting yes to send her to the next round. She would go on to sing Stronger again in the first part of their Hollywood week, which allowed her to advance again to the Las Vegas round. In this round, she sang Be My Baby by the Ronettes in a group with another contestant by the name of Chelsea Sorrell. They both advanced and Brown would sing Here Comes Goodbye by Rascal Flatts in order to make it to the top 24, where she would finally be eliminated after singing Amazed by Lone Star. Taylor and Bailey's relationship would be on and off with it ending sometime between 2014 and 2015. Eventually, Bailey would DM people about Haley and Taylor being together before it was officially revealed by them. She may have also had people leak details on closed moi Facebook groups about them buying a house together too. On May 8th, 2023, Issa Faye tweeted two screenshots from the song Creepin' off of Pedals for Armor where they captured theorizing that the song is about Bailey. I don't think Bailey has ever publicly acknowledged the song, nor has Haley confirmed the song is about her, so it's still up in the air. Haley Williams and Robert Pattinson, Artist on Artist. 
Back in 2008, for the release of Twilight, MySpace released an episode of their Artist on Artist online show featuring Haley and Robert Pattinson, who played Edward in the movie. The one-on-one -on -one interview consisted of the two talking about how they got involved in the movie, with Robert contemplating quitting acting before he even took the job. Haley knew about the books and elaborated on how Josh had written a song that would work for the movie. They also got to know each other more, with Robert asking where Haley is from and them laughing and joking about Haley's accent. Next, they talked about MySpace a bit and how Haley interacted with some fans whenever they first created the band's account. Haley then tells Robert that he should be in a horror film, with him responding about how hard it would be to look scared. One funny exchange from this interview is Haley referring to veggie burgers as garden burgers, with Robert questioning her for saying it. Their public popularity is mentioned too, with Haley talking about how people will come up to her asking if she's actually Haley Williams, and her saying no and that she gets that a lot. The last thing Robert brings up is how he wanted to make music after he was done with Twilight, yet he actually made a couple of songs for the movie, being Let Me Sign and Never Think. Besides those two, he's made some other songs here and there throughout his career. Overall, this interview showed viewers a more relatable, realistic, and goofy side of these celebrities that we don't always get to see. Earlier versions of Brand New Eyes songs In the Behind Brand New Eyes documentary, Multiple earlier versions of songs from the album are shown off as the band was working on them. For Brick by Born Brick, the documentary begins with Haley and someone else on guitar workshopping the chorus for the song. The chorus is completely different from the final, with Haley belting out the lyrics of what would then become the bridge. For feeling sorry, the entire chorus is different, which I'll just compare it to the final chorus for you guys. Honestly, I kind of prefer the early chorus more due to the better lyrics and vocal delivery from Haley. I've seen that other people in the community prefer it too. I'm guessing they changed it to better fit the flow of the song. For Ignorance, the song is in a different key. Instead of singing, well I guess I'll make my own way, Haley sings, I guess I'll make my own way home. For looking up, the starting guitar riff is using a different take, and the song is also using a different vocal take from the final, which you can hear the best during the song's outro. Finally, for where the lines overlap, the arrangement of the chorus is completely different. During a session, Zach gives more criticism on it, saying it feels more like a second half of a chorus instead of an entire chorus. Like I mentioned previously with the self-titled sessions, I would love to see more documentaries covering the creation of their albums. With all the footage the band has from making This Is Why, maybe we'll see a documentary for it soon. The Secret Lyrics Blog In the same documentary as the last entry and in the music video for Careful, you can see Haley scrolling through a blog on her Mac that has the lyrics for the song on it dated January 20th, 2009. In the documentary specifically, there appears to be a poem right above it. Thanks to Live Journal users' value of truth and Miss Common Sense, were somehow able to read the screen, we can see what she wrote through a translation. It says, As I walked around a yellow house, I thought it might be strange to imagine myself inside, cooking, cleaning, living an entirely different life. And then I wondered who I am to tell myself it won't be me one bittersweet day. A dainty housewife, cold and lonely, with robot kids to share my story. Keep my dream safe, tucked away in the diary by my bed. I pray that in the haze I can envision myself befriending all the dead, waking them up to help them out in any way I can, to show them there is more than lying in the graveyard. Day in and day out, I will turn the stuff for life around. Sadly, in the 14 years since the doc was made, nobody has found out what the display name was, but maybe one of you guys might be able to make it out. I tried giving it a shot, but my eyes aren't good enough. Taylor was an original member. 
While Taylor officially joined a band following Hunter's departure in 2007, he was actually going to be an original member even before Haley joined. He was in a small band with Zach, Josh, and one of their friends, Jason Clark, who would eventually go on to work with Zach on Half Noise. However, his parents stopped him from joining since he was still in high school. I've heard that he was originally going to play drums, but I doubt this since Zach was in the band. I mean, he did play the drums on Monster, so I could be wrong. Miss Anne. Miss Anne was Haley's old car, which was a 2003 Mazda. It was actually her mom's old car, as she would reminisce on memories with it in her car showcase special with MTV in 2009. She ended up buying the car from her mom since she was trying to get rid of it. On the back, there were a lot of bumper stickers from different bands, such as No Doubt, American Nightmare, and New Found Glory, since she was dating Chad at the time. She also had a sticker from her favorite record shop in Nashville, Grimey's. On the inside of the car, she has some army men fighting zombies, some pins at the top, and some drawings slash posters at the top. The funniest thing would be the message from her little sister, which read, you're the best fug king sister, right on. Haley then stated that her sister thought she would get away with this since she was 13 and it wasn't the actual F word. Since then, I'm pretty sure the car has been put up somewhere. Hidden Corporate Messages Before the band ultimately decided on their name, they were at a Taco Bell one day when one of the employees there recommended that they name themselves Hidden Corporate Messages. As we know, this name didn't ultimately stick, and honestly, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Like, what corporate messages would they hide? Paramore in the street. Back in 2005 and 2006, Haley, Jason, and Josh would perform acoustic songs from All We Know Is Fallen outside in the street. These songs included Emergency, Pressure, and Here We Go Again, which are all fan favorites from the album. The acoustic performances of these tracks showed how talented the band were when they first started and how good they sound outside of the studio. Taylor singing Airplanes I don't know what show this is from, but there's a 13 second clip of Taylor singing Airplanes by B.O.B., which Haley was featured on. makes me wonder why he doesn't sing that often on any of the band's tracks. Halloween 2005, The Crowbar During their All We Know Is Fallen tour, the band ended up performing at The Crowbar in State College, Pennsylvania on Halloween. While there is a 20 second clip of them playing All We Know, there is no published set list from this show. However, there is a set list for the show that came the following day, which featured Pressure, All We Know, Here We Go Again, Woe, and My Heart. So it's probably fair to say that both shows had the same set list. Take Me Back Take Me Back is an unreleased song from the band that was played by Haley and Josh for 10 seconds in the Final Riot documentary. The lyrics that can be made out from the snippet are possibly, when you're looking back, this will all make sense. All the dreams that I could never get if you take me back. There's a possibility that the song was never recorded, so we'll probably never hear a studio quality version of it. The writing of Singles Club was streamed. Apparently, the writing of Singles Club was streamed, presumably on Ustream, but since Ustream was acquired by IBM in 2018, the footage for these streams, if they did exist, is probably lost. While there is footage from their March 2011 stream online, I've been unable to find any footage of them actually writing. Rainbow Rainbow was a group made up of Josh, Zach, and one of their friends, Zach Hall, that made songs parodying or making fun of gay people. Four songs from them have been released on YouTube, which are Yessa, Oh Snap, Gingerbread Man, and Bed Bath & Beyond. Yesa has the group just dragging out the word yes with the feminine voice. They also mentioned seeing a boy while walking down the street and twerking with them. Oh Snap was just a parody of Justin Timberlake's Bringing Sexy Back, but with halfway through the song, the beat changes to some random guitar riffs, then goes back to the Bringing Sexy Back instrumental. Gingerbread Man was just a parody of the classic Christmas tune. 
Their last song, Bed Bath & Beyond, is about them popping bubbles while portraying different animals and about a rainbow in a tub. All in all, this group is just an unfortunate product of its time. Fans threw condoms at Haley. For what is possibly the most bizarre entry on this iceberg, during Warp Tour 06 and their US headline in Tour in 06, in July and September respectively, fans threw condoms at Haley while she was talking in between songs. Keep in mind that Haley was 17 at the time of both occurrences, meaning it would be pretty heinous and a little criminal if an adult threw these at her. Even if it was someone around her age, it was still a very weird and uncomfortable thing to do. She did state in a 2020 interview with Vulture that the Warped Tour incident embarrassed her a lot, leading her to talk shit due to being young and arrogant, yet she doesn't think she was wrong. She also said she remembers dealing with plenty of sexism during this tour too. The second time around, it didn't seem to phase Haley too much, but she did ask the person who threw the condom to come on stage as a possible joke. Haley left the band. For a period of time in summer 2015, Haley actually left the band as she dealt with serious depression. She noted how hopeless everything was and how for the first time in her life, there didn't seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel. At this point in time, this would have left Jeremy and Taylor as the only members left. Thankfully, Taylor kept pushing her to come back by continuing to send her new music, which would eventually lead to the creation of After Laughter. I feel like this entry could have been higher on the iceberg, but I still think it fits here for those who are new to the band. Haley is a drummer. Believe it or not, Haley can competently play the drums and has done so on multiple occasions. There's some funny videos of Zach recording her playing around with one of his drum sets from what I assume to be the After Laughter era. In one of the band's earlier videos, she even stumbles during her introduction by saying she plays the drums. I've heard from people that Haley actually wanted to join the band as a drummer, but I don't know the validity of this since I couldn't find any information on it. I must admit that it's very interesting to imagine a world with Haley as the drummer of the band. Tier 7 Haley wasn't the original lead singer. To close off this insane video, Haley Williams actually wasn't going to be the lead singer of this band. Yes, I know, it sounds unreal. I can't even imagine what it'd be like if Haley went down the path of being a solo artist instead of joining the band. The story starts before Haley joined the band in 2003, as there was a man by the name of Randall Thomas who was going to be the original lead singer. Him, Zach, Josh, Taylor, and Zach Hall all started playing music together in high school before they met Haley. Eventually, their band would break up, leading to the creation of Paramore. Apparently, for one of their earlier hits, Conspiracy, its original instrumentals were made with Randall in mind until the original band split up. Haley would go on to make a poem named Conspiracy and sing it until it all came together to be the song we know today. Randall has given his account of this information, minus the part about Conspiracy. Unfortunately, he didn't provide any dates or years, so we can only guess the timeline of these events. I'm really interested in what the band would have sounded like with Randall taking the helm at vocals instead of Haley, but I highly doubt there are any recorded songs with them. It's honestly bittersweet to finish this project off since I've met some amazing people in the Paramore community through both of these videos. This long-standing and passionate community has been very welcoming and helpful to me, so I can't thank them enough. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but part one made my dream of becoming a successful creator on this platform actually realistic. I will have to be more consistent with my uploads though, so I'll be going back to shorter videos for the time being. I got a long list of videos to make that I think y'all will enjoy. I hope y'all were able to learn something new from this video, but if you didn't, that's perfectly fine too. If I missed anything you thought should have been in this video, let me know in the comments below since I always read and reply to as many of them as I can. I hope y'all are enjoying your days and nights and taking care of yourselves. As always, thanks for watching and please do great things every day.